Hello everybody, it's Siona from Honouring Me Crochet and Hooked on Crochet Club and it's Friday night which means it is once again crochet and chat time. So tonight I thought I would talk to you about learning to read crochet patterns. It's one of the reasons that people join the Hooked on Crochet Club is because I help teach you to read patterns get more familiar with them which then opens up a even bigger world for crochet because you can once you can read them you can also write them hopefully and it also means that you can take on more projects you're not limited by your YouTube tutorials or someone showing you and relying on your memory to do it you'll have a pattern to follow so I want you to know that if you do struggle, that you're not alone. Oh, before I go on, I should tell you what I'm making here. So this is, you've probably seen it. I've been making the granny squares some weeks along in the club, oh, in the clubhouse, in my crochet and chat sessions. So I'm now at the point where I can start to join my squares together. So I've done a couple of rows and I'll be spending some time doing that this weekend as well. Um, so I'm just going to do that while we chat. So I, I hope you've had a good week. I um, hope the weather is nicer where you are because where I am right now, I'm understanding now why our insurance company gave us a weather warning yesterday because yesterday was beautiful spring sunny day and today we've got really strong winds and rain and it's cold and yick. But anyway, I'm here to teach you or help you learn to read patterns. So as I said, if you do struggle, you're not alone. Um, and there's many reasons why you may struggle to read a pattern. So I'll go over those and then give you some handy tips for what you can consider when you want to start. So essentially consider reading patterns like a foreign language. Um, it doesn't need to be a foreign language though. It's like anything, you just need to learn what it is that it, you're needing to read and understand how it works. So it's a skill that you need to learn and how well you pick them up and learn to read a pattern is going to depend on your current crochet knowledge. So, and it will also depend on who has written them and how, because I can assure you that not all patterns are written equally. And I know because I can read patterns and there are some that I pick them up as well and just, I don't know what they've done to write them. And I often, once I decipher it, rewrite it myself so that it makes sense. So don't always think that it's you if you can't read a pattern. So when it comes to written patterns, I found that some are written with the assumption that the person reading has prior knowledge of all the terms and instructions and techniques within the pattern. So they might not tell you how to make some of the special stitches. They might assume that you already know it. Um, they might assume, like I've read some ones for toys, they might, un might assume that you know what an increase means and they don't explain what to do for that, um, which some of you may, some of you may not. So when I, I know when I write my patterns, I like to make it so that I don't assume that you have any knowledge. So I like to provide everything that you need to know so that you can follow them essentially. Um, now, you might also find if there's a term, if they haven't defined everything in the pattern, then you're also going to find it um, difficult to follow because you're going to find yourself searching, Googling to find out exactly what they're talking about. Now, you also might struggle to read a pattern because you're unfamiliar with the names of the stitches or in the case of the charts, what the symbols actually mean. That also becomes complicated if you don't realise that for English anyway, that you could be having, what am I doing here? I've missed a spot. You could 
that there is actually US and UK terms. And if you don't realise that, then you might struggle to follow, especially because there is some overlap with the stitches. Um, and you don't realise that until your what you're making doesn't look like the picture. So there's another reason why. And I know I've been caught before thinking that I've been following a pattern that's in US terms. And then when I've compared it, I've realised that it was in UK terms. So and then sometimes the pattern has mistakes in it. So remember that humans are the ones writing the patterns and carbon-based errors, as in human errors, are the most common mistakes. Um, and if you do find what you think is a mistake in a pattern, then always go back and check with the pattern writer or the designer if you can, depending on where you've found it. If it's in a magazine, you might struggle. Um, but don't assume that it is you that is making the mistake. And I know I'm always happy to help. And I have made mistakes in patterns. I'll admit that. And I've corrected them and then sent them back out to everyone. Um, I do try to minimise the mistakes, as I'm sure all designers will try to minimise the mistakes. But again, we are human. And then sometimes you'll find that it is just too complicated to, the way it's written to be able to follow it. Um, especially if you've got repeats in the pattern and it's telling you to go from one asterisk to two asterisks and then back again. And uh, I know they do, that does my head in. And they're the ones that I'll often um, rewrite as well so it makes sense. So, and that's why I don't use those, that way of writing patterns very often. Um, depends how complicated the repeat is but I tend to use formatting instead so I'll make things bold and say repeat the steps in bold and I'll use italics and say repeat the steps in italics and then do this and that um, so yeah formatting can be a big thing in making it easier to follow so there's some of the big reasons or some of the main reasons why you might struggle to read a pattern and I don't want you to let that put you off because there are ways that you can then learn and you can build on that muscle, I guess you could call it, so that you don't struggle. So I'll give you some tips. So before you start reading a pattern, make sure that you're familiar with the names of stitches that you're actually making. I know in my workshops people have... Um, aren't aware of the terms or they don't know if they're using UK or US terms so be very clear on that first. Um, the best way to check is do you have single crochet in your stitch vocabulary? If you use single crochet then you're on US terms. If you don't know what a single crochet is then you're probably using UK terms. And as I said, there is some overlap. So double crochet is in both. Treble is in both. Um, and they're quite common stitches. So it is very easy to get them mixed up. And if you're not sure, um, then ask yourself what stitch it is that you make a granny square with. So if you make it with a treble, then you are using... UK terms. If you make a granny stitch with a double crochet, then you're using US terms. So that's another way for you to easily figure it out. So most people have made a granny square or two in their life. All right, once you know what language you use, always check for it in the pattern or book. So I put both terms in mind, so it's pretty easy to figure out and I have to label it clearly. Some don't. Um, or they might say at the start in the introduction or somewhere along there exactly what it is that language they use. Um, in a book, they might not specify, but you can always check by where it is published because, and that's how I check that now before I actually purchase a book. Um, if it's published in the US, then I'm confident that it's US terms. If it's published in Europe or UK, and possibly even Australia, then it's more likely to be UK terms. And like I can follow them, but I do have a preference for the US. And then if you want to read a chart, then you need to get yourself familiar with the stitches. They're pretty uniform um, across the board as to what 
the symbols are. Sorry, I just need some scissors. There we go. Didn't bring my pretty ones in tonight. Look, we now have an extra row, extra square. And I'll just weave that end in because I did bring that in. Um, so usually with a chart, the stitches are, there is usually a legend for it. So just follow the legend. And when you're reading it, if you're working in the round, then you're going to go in the same direction every round. So usually the round when you're reading a chart will start with a number. Well, they'll put the number at the first set of stitches. So you can follow that or else you can check for... Um, a chain in place of a stitch because that's quite often something that will be done so you can use that to check um, if you're working in rows and you've got to learn to read from left to right then right to left and they'll put the number at the start of the row so that you can follow that and then you know you've just got to read it from that side and back and then I also suggest that if you want to start reading a pattern that's silly there, on, on your own, that you start with one that you actually already know how to make. So I'd find a granny square pattern or that's probably the most common because generally you know how to make a granny square and then just practice reading the chart to see if you can make it make sense against what you are used to doing or reading if you've got one with written instructions to follow that so that you can find it easier to follow. Um, and it's sort of like working backwards. So that's another easy way to teach yourself if you don't have someone to help teach you. Now what colour am I up to? Yellow. Where's my basket? Oh, excuse me. Now I've got a yellow one. Okay. Turn this back around. So I don't want you to get put off from reading patterns. It's something it'll open your world up even more um and I know well it's too late to join the clubhouse now but in the clubhouse when I um give the live tutorial for the square of the month I actually demonstrate it with the chart to help encourage people to learn to read that um but you can still do that with the with a pattern that you're familiar with. It's like self-teaching, which I know we a lot of us do that with crochet. So there's not really a lot more than that that you really need to consider to start reading them. Just don't get put off by it. Don't think that it's you that's got the problem. Um, I promise you that it's more likely to be the pattern and things you don't know but they're all something that you can learn. And if you want to practice, well, then I have, well, tomorrow is the first Saturday of the month, which means my new free pattern comes out, um, but you can grab the current month's pattern now that's free, and that's all, it doesn't have a chart in it, but it does have written instructions. So if you want to learn to read written instructions, then they're a good start. And that one, it's not a difficult pattern with difficult repeats either. So it's my spring garden scarf. So it'll be easy for you to learn from. But anyway, that's pretty much the end. So if you've ever got any questions on reading a pattern or a chart, feel free to message me. I am happy to help. It's my crochet learning corner. You're all welcome to join that. That one's a free one to learn. And I am there to give guidance and assistance um, in there to a certain degree as well. I'm all about helping you learn and build on your crochet skills. So that's it for me now. I'm going to, oh, it's takeaway night for us. The first Friday of the month we have takeaway night. So I am going to be ordering in. I've got the end of a bottle of wine that I can enjoy. I might actually have tea, we'll see. And that's it. I'm going to continue adding some this square and I will be back next week for more crochet and chat. So thank you for joining me. Thank you if you've listened. 
and we'll be back next week. Enjoy your weekend.